Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Hong Kong banks line up fireworks dinners, lucky draws to entice new clients. Messi won't have it easy in Hong Kong, says coach plotting to eclipse the goat. Chinese consumers unimpressed by Samsung phones, powered by Baidu AI. Another Article 23 debacle would shatter government's credibility. Creditor battles are hobbling risky debt, Credit Weekly. Hong Kong banks line up fireworks dinners, lucky draws to entice new clients. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong banks are offering incentives to attract wealthy customers and depositors ahead of the Lunar New Year. HSBC, Bank of China, Hong Kong, BOCHK, Standard Chartered, Bank of East Asia, BEA, OCBC and ICBC Asia have launched marketing campaigns to lock in new clients and entertain wealthy customers to kick off the Year of the Dragon, which starts on February 10. This year, many banks are focusing on the tradition of handing out lucky packets containing money, known as Lycee. Messi won't have it easy in Hong Kong, says coach plotting to eclipse the goat. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's invitational team is set to face Inter Miami in a friendly match, with Lionel Messi set to make his debut for the American club. Despite the overwhelming challenge, Hong Kong's coach insists that his team will not back down and will give their best performance. The coach wants his team to compete and not hold back, even though they may not have a chance of winning. The match has caused some controversy due to its timing during the Asian Cup, but the coach believes that this is the only time Inter Miami could come for a preseason match. Chinese consumers unimpressed by Samsung phones, powered by Baidu AI. South China Morning Post Samsung's integration of Chinese search giant Baidu's AI technology into its latest flagship smartphones has failed to attract significant interest from consumers in mainland China. Many Chinese consumers have expressed concerns that the search features on the local version of the Galaxy S24 series may not be as good as those on the international version, which is supported by Google's Gemini AI. Samsung's share of the Chinese smartphone market has slumped to less than 1% from 20% over the past decade due to competition from Chinese vendors. Another Article 23 debacle would shatter government's credibility. SCMP Opinion The government of Hong Kong has unveiled a consultation document on proposed changes to the city's national security law. The document is more comprehensive than a 2002 version and includes updates to legislation on espionage and protection of official secrets, as well as new offenses of foreign interference and sabotage. The government has stressed the importance of safeguarding national security while adhering to the common law principles and fundamental rights enshrined in the Basic Law and International Human Rights Treaties. The document does not include offenses of secession and subversion, which are covered by Beijing's national security law enacted in 2020. Creditor battles are hobbling risky debt, Credit Weekly. Bloomberg. Investors including J.P. Morgan Chase and affiliates of BlackRock are fighting to undo a 2022 rescue financing package that left them worse off. Companies that run into trouble have been more aggressive about obtaining emergency funding while leaving other creditors worse off. As a result, these other investors are further back in line to be paid if the company fails, hurting their returns. Repeat defaulters are partly to blame for the low recoveries, with 40% of bankruptcy filings in 2023 having a prior default, according to Morgan Stanley. Powell is right to be cautious on rate cuts. SCMP Opinion The U.S. Federal Reserve has held interest rates at 5.25% to 5.5% for the fourth consecutive time, despite falling inflation and hopes for a rate cut. Fed Chairman Jay Powell moved to cool speculation of a rate cut in March, stating that the central bank needed more evidence that inflation would continue to fall. Powell's caution surprised and disappointed many in the market, leading to a plunge in U.S. markets. However, the Hong Kong market remained positive, with investors taking advantage of the market's low valuations. It is expected that interest rates will come down this year, but not as quickly as some had hoped. 
Update 1 Dodging Lead Consortium Sets Out Financing for Holocy Spid. Yahoo! A consortium led by China's Dodging Group acquisition has secured financing for its $29.50 per share bid for Holocy's automation technologies, in competition with a rival offer from Ascendant Capital. The Dodging Consortium has secured a $1.5 billion debt commitment letter from an unnamed China-based bank's Hong Kong branch and $800 million in equity commitments from Dodging Group and TFI Asset Management. The consortium has urged Holacy shareholders to vote against Ascendant Capital's offer ahead of a shareholders' meeting next week. The wild probe into investors of DWAC, Trump Media's proposed merger ally. Washington Post Documents filed in a criminal case against three investors in Digital World Acquisition, the SPAC that merged with Donald Trump's media company, Trump Media, have revealed allegations of insider trading. The FBI has accused the investors of buying up Digital World shares and warrants before the merger was announced, then selling them for huge profits after the announcement caused the share price to soar. One of the investors, Anton Postolnikov, reportedly made $22 million profit, while another, Michael Schwarzman, made $18 million. Digital World Acquisition has already settled SEC charges that it misled investors and violated rules counteracting fraud, agreeing to pay $18 million if the merger goes ahead. China's angry investor skirt censors with replies to U.S. Embassy. Bloomberg the U.S. Embassy in China's social media account has become a popular platform for Chinese citizens to voice their concerns about the economy and stock market. The comments section of the embassy's Weibo post on giraffe protection received over 53,000 comments and 300,000 likes. Chinese internet users often struggle to find a venue to voice their grievances about the economy or government performance, as official accounts of Chinese state agencies or media usually disable the comment function or only show selected feedback. The Chinese Communist Party has vowed to strengthen public opinion guidance on economic affairs and warned that negative comments would endanger national security. Is Singapore warning others by hauling up businessman for foreign interference? South China Morning Post. Singapore has designated a naturalized citizen as a politically significant person under its foreign interference law, reportedly due to his activities that advance Chinese interests in the country. The individual, Philip Chan Man Ping, is the first person to be served a notice of intended designation under the anti foreign interference law. While the Ministry of Home Affairs did not explicitly mention which country Chan was acting for, a background check revealed that he holds a Hong Kong identification card and is associated with companies linked to China. Analysts suggest that Singapore's decision signals the government's strong stance against external actors and its readiness to take action, despite potential backlash from other states. The decision to designate Chan as a politically significant person is likely to set a precedent for determining what actions qualify as advancing foreign interests. The move highlights alleged Chinese political interference in Singapore, and analysts note that the situation is not unique to Singapore, as other locations around the world have indications of similar behavior by individuals and groups aligned with China. Some in the business community have stressed the need for clearer boundaries to avoid running afoul of anti-foreign interference laws. Singapore's government is expected to maintain its neutrality and take action against individuals promoting foreign interests in order to protect its credibility and maintain its image as a neutral financial hub. Chan has been involved in previous incidents and was warned by authorities in 2019 for facilitating an illegal public gathering to discuss Hong Kong's anti-government protests. He has also written articles for a Chinese-language newspaper in Singapore and has been involved in grassroots appointments. Once designated as a politically significant person, Chan will be required to make annual disclosures of political donations and foreign affiliations and will be subject to scrutiny by the authorities. He has 14 days to submit representations to the registrar and can appeal the decision to the Minister of Home Affairs. Davis Cup shock as Hong Kong beats player 1,300 spots higher in tennis rankings. South China Morning Post 
Hong Kong has taken a 2-0 lead over Zimbabwe in their Davis Cup World Group 2 playoff. In the opening match, Jack Wong Hong Kit fought back to defeat Benjamin Locke in a thrilling three-set match. Despite being ranked almost 1,300 places below Locke, Wong managed to secure victory. In the second match of the day, Coleman Wong Chuck Lam defeated Courtney Locke in straight sets. Hong Kong are now in a strong position to win the tie and avoid relegation from World Group 2. Hall goes from Scottish construction sites to facing Lionel Messi in Hong Kong. South China Morning Post Callum Hall, a 23-year-old defender from Scotland, will be playing against Lionel Messi and his Inter-Miami teammates in a match on Sunday. Hall was released by Scottish Premiership Club High Hernian as a teenager but has since been selected for a Hong Kong 11 squad. He described the opportunity to play against Messi as a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Hall spent his teenage years fitting part-time football around long days working on construction sites before being selected for the team. He said that being let go by Hibs at 16 was the best thing that could have happened to him. The government should listen to the people on national security laws. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong's recently released consultation paper on national security laws has the potential to restrict free expression and hinder the city's efforts to promote itself as an international hub, warns an op-ed in the South China Morning Post. It argues that the 30-day consultation period is too short and that the proposals are too broad, while calling for the government to listen and learn from past protests. The Secret to the Perfect Dark Sky Holiday Telegraph Dark sky tourism is becoming increasingly popular as travelers seek a deeper connection with the natural nighttime environment. Light pollution is growing at a rate of 10% per year, making it harder for people to access natural darkness. As a result, destinations such as the southwest US, Chile, New Zealand, Namibia, and Britain and Ireland are creating International Dark Sky Places, IDSP, to preserve their ecosystems and provide opportunities for stargazing. There are only a few tour operators that offer all-inclusive dark sky travel packages, so self-planned trips focusing on local astronomy tours are often the best option. In the southwest U.S., the states of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico are rich in starry skies. The region's dry climate and high elevation make it ideal for night sky viewing. The southwest U.S. is home to the first-ever IDSP, the International Dark Sky Community of Flagstaff, Arizona, and offers a range of stargazing opportunities, from desert landscapes to national parks. The Elqui Valley in northern Chile is known for its dark skies and is home to several world-class astronomical observatories. New Zealand offers the Aoraki Mackenzie International Dark Sky Reserve, one of the biggest in the world. Namibia's Namibran Nature Reserve is the only IDSP on the African continent and combines stargazing with desert landscapes and nocturnal wildlife. The UK and Ireland have numerous IDSPs, making it easier for travelers to experience natural darkness closer to home. China Xinjiang invites overseas media to political meetings for first time. South China Morning Post Xinjiang has invited foreign media and diplomats to attend its annual political meetings in a bid to improve its international image amid allegations of human rights abuses and forced labor. However, only select media outlets and diplomats were given access to the opening ceremonies of the advisory body and legislature. The move comes as China aims to strengthen its ties with neighboring countries, particularly those in Central Asia, and promote its efforts to fight terrorism and maintain stability in Xinjiang. The region's focus on counterterrorism has shifted in recent years, with maintaining social stability now a secondary priority. Hello, viewers. It's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six. I hope you're all doing well and ready for some interesting news from around the globe. Let's dive right in. First up, we have Hong Kong banks going all out to attract new clients for the Lunar New Year. They are offering incentives like lucky draws and fireworks dinners to entice wealthy customers. 
I must say, these banks really know how to celebrate the Year of the Dragon in style. Maybe I should consider switching careers and become a wealthy client myself. In the world of sports, Lionel Messi is set to make his debut for Inter Miami against Hong Kong's Invitational team. Despite the overwhelming challenge, Hong Kong's coach is confident that his team will give their best performance. I guess he's hoping for some dragon magic to help them out. Good luck to both teams. Moving on to technology, it seems that Samsung's integration of Baidu's AI technology into its latest flagship smartphones hasn't impressed Chinese consumers. They have expressed concerns that the local version may not be as good as the international version supported by Google's AI. Looks like Samsung has some work to do if they want to win back the Chinese market. In other news, the government of Hong Kong has unveiled a consultation document on proposed changes to the city's national security law. The document is more comprehensive than before and includes new offenses of foreign interference and sabotage. However, it does not include offenses of secession and subversion, which are covered by Beijing's national security law. Oh, the delicate balancing act of maintaining national security and fundamental rights. Next, we have a battle of creditors in the risky debt market. J.P. Morgan Chase and BlackRock are fighting to undo a rescue financing package that left them worse off. It seems that companies in trouble are becoming more aggressive in obtaining emergency funding, leaving other creditors at a disadvantage. It's like a game of musical chairs, and some investors are left without a seat. Now let's talk about the U.S. Federal Reserve's decision to hold interest rates steady, disappointing some market players. Fed Chairman Jay Powell wants more evidence that inflation will continue to fall before considering a rate cut. His caution surprised many, but the Hong Kong market remained positive. I guess they're taking advantage of the low valuations. Patience is a virtue, my friends. On the corporate finance front, a consortium led by China's Dajin Group has secured financing for its bid for Holocene's automation technologies. They have urged shareholders to vote against a rival offer. It's always exciting to see these bidding wars unfold. Who will come out on top? Stay tuned. In the world of politics, we have a wild probe into investors of DWAC, the SPAC that merged with Donald Trump's media company. Documents filed in a criminal case have revealed allegations of insider trading. Looks like some investors made huge profits from the announcement of the merger. I guess they were playing the game of buy low, sell high on steroids. Now let's talk about China's angry investors finding a platform to voice their concerns. The U.S. Embassy in China's social media account has become a popular platform for Chinese citizens to express their grievances about the economy and stock market. It seems that official Chinese accounts are not as open to criticism. Well, at least they found a way to be heard. Shifting our focus to Singapore, the government has designated a naturalized citizen as a politically significant person under its foreign interference law. This move signals Singapore's strong stance against external actors and its readiness to take action. Looks like they don't want anyone playing with their neutrality. Better watch your step, folks. In tennis news, Hong Kong has taken a surprising lead over Zimbabwe in their Davis Cup playoff. In the opening match, Jack Wong Hong Kit defeated Benjamin Locke in a thrilling three-set match. Despite being ranked much lower, Wong showed that rankings don't always tell the whole story. Keep fighting, Hong Kong. Now let's talk about Callum Hall, a defender from Scotland who will be playing against Lionel Messi in a match. Hall was released by a Scottish club as a teenager but has since been selected for a Hong Kong 11 squad. Talk about a comeback story. I'm sure he's excited for this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Dreams do come true, my friends. Lastly, we have the topic of national security laws in Hong Kong. An op-ed warns that the recently released consultation paper has the potential to restrict free expression and hinder the city's international image. The call is for the government to listen and learn from past protests. Time will tell if they take this advice to heart.
And with that, we wrap up another edition of the Six Degrees Briefing. I hope you enjoyed our journey through the latest news. Now, over to you, my dear viewers. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions for me? The floor is yours, so let's hear what you have to say. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.